welcome yet again to an amazing month where we're going to share very interesting stuff about business. Business group coaching is back. This business started in 2019 on the cusp of COVID. Right now, the, the entire organization has over 30 people. If that is not growth, you see what I meant when I told you we were bringing somebody with results to show? The, the reason why I need to have this is that people who follow me are mostly sinners. So, <laughs> so they need to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> so he knew how to calculate cost of goods, he knew how to purchase, he knew how to price, he knew how to repair things that come at you that you're not in control of in the business world yeah so this uh, it's my way of remembering where God has brought me from that one day I had no business then another yeah I had a business yes one time I was overcome with debt another time I overcame the debt Hallelujah. one time I was overcome with uh, bad decisions and people were always leaving me by the thousands and now people are staying and working with me longer they don't want to be so they don't want to go anywhere ah, we bless yeah the so Lord. my list keeps growing and by the time i go through it it even has dates i i get encouraged and forget that this thing that was being a mountain now becomes a really uh, a real anthill really. ah, okay. so is this list uh, is it written in your head or it's written down somewhere it used to be written down Okay. But because I over recited, it became a mental checklist. Ah, we bless the Lord. Yes. Bless the Lord for lists that are now in yeah. memory. Yeah, so friends, we are praying through um, Deuteronomy 6.12. It says, Then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Yes, mm -hmm. it's easy to forget where you've come from, so we don't want to be those people who forget. We are going to pray that we shall not be those people counted among those who forget because that's where pride comes from yes. that's when we don't enjoy what we have around us because our focus is elsewhere so let's pray that we shall be people who always remember and we can do that by writing down uh, what we are thankful for uh, so that we keep away pride we keep away uh, failing to enjoy what God has already given us so Father we yes. thank you that we have life you've given us life and for us who know you we have everlasting life we have eternal life we have a relationship with you that means we are not running our businesses alone we are running our businesses with you lord you are our board of governors you are the whole board of governors you're the chair you're everything and we can inquire of you and you give us answers immediately we thank you that wisdom from you is better than anything man can offer we thank you that you gave us the ideas you're not always giving us ideas to start businesses um, those business ideas didn't just fall from anywhere they didn't come from the devil they came from you because you're the father uh, you're a good father you give good gifts you're not a bad father uh, you're more than willing to give us but we are not as we even don't know how much we need to take from you because you're more than willing to give us everything that you have for us so we thank you we shall not see people who forget we shall not forget that you brought us from a time when there was no business garage the time now we have business garage thank you and that we have content we can use to train our staff we can use to to refer back to any time that is local content african bread locally bred content that we have here that yes, we can always refer Lord. to before yes, business garage we didn't have that content and we couldn't have things to go back to we'd have to look for things beyond borders so father we thank you that we have that content that we can rely on we can use for instruction to grow and we thank you for the changes that you brought into our businesses as a reason of instruction here at business garage Lord, we lift up our voices and say thank you Jesus thank you because you've given us Life. You've given us breath. That every morning we wake up, that our arms work, our brains work, our eyes work, our ears work, our mouths, our noses, our feet, and everything that we have in our bodies are working. Lord, we thank you that for those who, who some of their body parts don't work, that Father, you've given them the ability of God to think and to think and to grow with Father, we thank you that you've given them the ability of God to think and to grow with 
to grow with you. Give it them, give it them because you give us the ability to think, oh Lord. Father, that, that before your word says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Father, we thank you because you're giving us good information through your word, through, our, through these places of business courage and these places of, of coaching and mentorship. You're giving us great ideas that shall begin to shape our lives. And Father, you begin to cause us to be changed and to become more like you. Yes, Lord. Um, friends, we are still giving thanks. If yes. you have a testimony, share it online. And at Kunda Tumsime, we acknowledge your presence being the first comment in the chat. Ah, share that yes, testimony if you have. We shall be able to read it. But we are still giving thanks because Thanksgiving is endless. Yes. It's endless. Do you have customers? Give thanks. Yes. Do you have... Uh, Premises, Employees. give thanks. Ah, yes, premises. Do you have a business idea? Give thanks. Because yes, there are people indeed. who are stuck and don't know what to do. Have you spent a year in business? Give thanks. Have you spent 10 years in business? Give thanks. Do you employ someone and you pay their salary and you're taking care of their family through God has used you to take care of their family? Give thanks. Even when the business is not working, yes. give thanks. Even when oh, you yes. haven't sold a, a product or a service in, in months, give thanks. Yeah, it may look like it's not working, but it is working. That season, maybe it's just a season of uh, sitting down to re-strategize yes. uh, and give thanks, take toll of what has happened. Uh, probably you don't know everything about your industry. So give thanks for what you know about your industry yes. and look for more information about your industry to change positions, to, to, to change direction for your business. So yes. there's always something to give thanks for. Amen. Yeah, even Amen. if you, you're Amen. worried that uh, this week you haven't sold anything, there is something you did the week before, give thanks for that. Therein is a way to bring in more people because yes. Thanksgiving increases uh, increases us, it doesn't diminish us. Yes, that's Yeah, true. so we are going to continue praying uh, and we have uh, Deuteronomy 8, 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to our fathers, as it is this day. Deuteronomy 8.18. 8, 18. You know what's coming to mind? Before uh -huh. God was saying, beware. Yes, now beware. he's saying, remember. You shall remember. So yes. really, he's, he's warning us about these things of, of uh, settling and thinking that we are self-made mm -hmm. we are not self-made we shall remember that it is god who, who gives us, us the power to get wealth yes you've yes. got wealth uh, you've forgotten the, the days of uh, when you were broke eh? and you had a thousand people chasing you to pay them yes. both suppliers and debtors and mm -hmm. employees and now you're settled God is saying, you shall remember the Lord your God. It is He who gives you power. To get wealth. Yes. Um, pride comes before a fall. So mm -hmm. this is a way to, to prevent a fall. To remember that you're not self-made. Sometimes you see people writing, journalists write that self-made billionaire. No, there's no one who's self-made. No one was, no one bore themselves into the world. No one <laughs> nurtured themselves into the world. There's no one who's self-made. There's always someone to give thanks to. So let's uh, first of all, thank God for reminding us that we need to always remember that He's our provider. Uh, yes, He is. Yes. He is. And then let's give thanks for everything He has given us. It's not ours. We are just stewards in the world. Yes. And that will humble us to, 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 to know that we have not acquired everything. There is a way to make more, that to be a blessing to other people, to win more salvations in the world. Our wealth is for kingdom purposes. Yes. To make the kingdom of God advance on earth and in the universe. I mean, when you finish earth, where do you go? Yeah, so let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've given us the power to create wealth. All the power comes from you. You did it with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it is written that they had possessions of flocks, possessions of servants, all those things, and they prospered, and they were known as friends of God. So, Father, we pray that we shall stay friends of God as we get wealth, as we grow wealthier, we shall not forget that you are a provider, that you are the one who has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness, uh, that because we can go, we can pay a doctor to treat us, doesn't mean that we have bought our health, 
Uh, you are the one who gives us health because by your stripes we were healed. Ultimately, we were healed by you. You are the one who gives the knowledge to those doctors to treat us. You are the one who gives us knowledge on how to make income streams. You are the one who gives us knowledge on how to do strategy in our businesses. You are the one who gives us knowledge on how to do negotiations, on how to do networking and all that. Lord, we lift up our voices and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you because you are good and you are good. And we thank you because you give us this part to make God that we may establish your covenant, O God, that covenant that you spoke to our fathers. Thank you because you give us wealth so that we may be able to, 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 to find the kingdom, to find the, find the work of ministry so that we may be able to find the, the, the spreading of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. We thank you because you give us wealth so that we may be able to be a blessing to others, that we may be a blessing to the fatherless, that we may be a blessing to the widows and to all those who are in distress, those who are, who are homeless. Father, you give us the part to make all well that we may be able to serve our communities, that we may, we may be able to serve our nation through paying taxes, that we may, we may be able to, to construct roads, hospitals, and so many other services. Father, you give us the power and the, and the, and the, and the, the power to get well that we, oh, we may be able to serve Lord. you and yes, to serve Lord. the people who you have put yes, on this Lord. earth. Oh, God, Father, we bless you because you are good and you are God. That, that Father, you are oh, also changing our hearts and our minds away from our selfish thinking, away from thinking about getting a house for ourselves and, and, and just school fees for our children. But Father, you begin to show us that we can begin to do more and do better and do greater things because you are good and you are God and you are the one who has lifted us up. Father, lift us up that we, we may begin, begin to be able to see the many great things that we can do, the many things we can do with the world that you're giving us, oh God. Many of us are, are drowning in, in billions and yet there are people who are suffering next to us. Open up our hearts and our minds that we may, we may begin to see the things that we can be able to do for the world, for the people, for the church that you created in Jesus' name. Yes. Thanksgiving reminds God that about his uh, covenant that he made with our forefathers. Yes. That, yeah, that it will, that's the way to activate it for us. So if you're stuck, businessman, businesswoman, it's not time to complain about the economy. It's about time to do something you haven't done before. And that's yes. give thanks all day and all night and see whether God is faithful. God is faithful. He will Amen. not let you Amen. go down. Amen. Things came to pass. Uh, Cook Kathy 256 says, I thank God that for the first time in years, Urban Refreshments, I think that's their business, has been so busy in the first quarter of the year. The business is glowing. Hallelujah. We thank God for Urban I'll Refreshments. Lord for Pastor Kathy. Pastor that it is busy. May you yes. be busy and busier every quarter of this year. And may you always come back to give thanks to God who has made it possible. That you are not self made, but it is a blessing from God that your business is visible yes. everywhere. Hey, everywhere. Yes. yes, we bless the Lord. And th that, that word, that testimony of Pastor Kathy can also be your, your prophecy. That You can also receive that. You've been struggling. Many people keep saying, ah, Lent is not a time to make business and all these things. Begin to change change your words. Begin to speak life into the, into the many things that you, that, you that you think you're struggling with. Begin to speak life to your life. To your, to your situation, begin to speak life into your business, begin to speak speak health into, oh, yes. into all your employees, begin to speak speak peace into everything that you hold, everything that you touch, into your products, into your services, begin to just say thank you Jesus because this thing is growing, thank you Jesus because you're causing us to be bigger and better in Jesus' oh, yes. name yeah, I've remembered that um, we can give thanks for our mentors eh? what would yes. it be without mentors Last year, I did uh, approach some people to be my coaches and mentors. Uh -huh. And for the first time, hmm, we, we did triple what we used to do in revenue. Ah, okay. I thought triple what? Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, triple. We tripled our productivity in the whole year. Ah, we blessed that. Yeah, Lord because of mentors. the coaches and mentors. So I thank God for coaches and mentors that have brought us to that level. Um, 
without them would be just groping in the dark, not sure, and doing the same thing over and over and getting the same results. But because they told us different things to do, we did them and we tripled our revenue. Ah, we thank the Lord. We yes. bless the Lord for that. So, yeah, give thanks. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. Uh, get out and uh, join us at Business Garage. We have an amazing interview with an entrepreneur uh, whose story is one to not miss. So call your friends, join us online, yes. share the link, uh, be expectant. As you give thanks, God is going to increase you. And when God has increased you, don't forget, come back and give thanks. Yes. Come and give thanks so that he can increase you more and more. Uh, it's not time to, to, to run away and even forget church. Amen. Amen. Welcome yet again to an amazing month where we're going to share very interesting stuff about business. Business group coaching is back. This business started in 2019 on the cusp of COVID. Right now, the, the entire organization has over 30 people. If that is not growth, you see what I meant when I told you we were bringing somebody with results to show? That the reason why I need to have this is that people who follow me are mostly sinners. So, <laughs> so they need to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> so he knew how to calculate cost of goods, he knew how to purchase, he knew how to price, he knew how to repair, he knew even how to collect debts. You strongly believe Jesus was a business? Yes. yes. Anyone who sets up a business to work in it, you created a job for yourself, that business will fail. When the leader is small, yeah. the business is definitely going to stay small. small and so is everyone in it trapped in the smallness. Exactly. You who think the business people are not in kingdom business. Ooh. It's the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me, within you bless his holy name forever. He's worthy of highest praise, and that's my soul. Woo! The Lord is worthy to be praised. Get ready to exalt Him. Come on. Oh, yeah. Made Him who knew no sin to become sin for us. Stripped of His majesty in a manger born a love that knows no end but see that overflow in love the righteous one and i'm forever changed in the righteousness of oh god oh i'm the righteousness of oh god i shout it out i'm the righteousness of oh god oh i'm the righteousness of oh god what kind of love is this that sets a prisoner free with righteousness gives me freedom to wait no more a slave to sin I walk in victory the curse of sin and death has no more hold of me I'm the righteous 
welcome yet again to an amazing month where we're going to share very interesting stuff about this edition of business garage and those of you in the room welcome again come on give the lord a mighty hand of praise as you can hear people online if you're still in bed please wake up get out of your get out from under those covers because we are here we are ready and we are praising the lord because he is our everything hallelujah come on studio audience those of you who might be here for the first time you can wave to us ah we are our first our guests some of you who are waving i don't understand but even those of you at home if it's your first time you're welcome you can just um um type in the chat and oh it's your first time or something or just just also uh, pick up your phone and share the link those of you in the room as well pick up your phone as well and share the link we are live on i think uh youtube and instagram twitter yes x now yes yes we bless the lord for all that you may have your seats in the studio ah you welcome again to this special edition of business garage and just before we get into it i'd like to just remind us of a, a scripture that we mentioned uh during the prayer session deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 uh, it says you shall remember the lord your god um, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. I'd just like to speak to those of you out there. You have your small business. You might even be thinking, I don't have a business. You might have a big business. Just remember that it is God who gives you the power to make wealth. You're, if you are an employee, remember that you are, you are selling your, your time and your service to your one customer who is your boss. So you are also in business. You're in the business of selling your time and your services. Hallelujah. So you are in the right place to learn from the Lord. And those of us in the audience and those of us online are just like, like us to remind, remind ourselves of who we are. For we are a movement of the gospel, discipleship and mission. And we exist for the purpose of catalyzing spiritual, social and economic renewal in our immediate communities and as a result the world. And we do this by planting, life-giving disciple-making, community renewing churches. And here at Rush Purpose we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. Beep, beep. Ah, hallelujah. The Lord is good. We have a special thing happening today. Those of you in the film industry, in media, you will be very excited to, uh, with what you're going to hear today. And I'm sure you're, you're, you're already excited. We're getting, getting into a time of giving. Um, we're, this is a Thanksgiving Sunday here at Wash Harvest, the first Sunday of every month, Thanksgiving. So a businessman, businesswoman, employee, employees, uh, employers, just I'd like to encourage you right now, just pick up your phone and, um, and prepare your offering. We have our giving details on the screen. If you want to give our mobile money, um, the, the numbers on the screen, they should be rolling on your screen online. Um, MTN, Airtel, there are also merchant codes and there's also a, a giving option for those of you who are giving online washpavest.org slash give and at this point I'd just like to invite uh, a song by to give us a song as we get into our time of giving. Just remember the Lord is the one who deserves your thanks and, and, and praise so give to him for he is good and he is God. Amen.
welcome yet again to an amazing month where we're going to share very interesting stuff about business. Business group coaching is back. This business started in 2019 on the cusp of COVID. Right now, the, the entire organization has over 30 people. If that is not growth, you see what I meant when I told you we were bringing somebody with results to show? That the reason why I need to have this is that people who follow me are mostly sinners. So, <laughs> so they need to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> so he knew how to calculate cost of goods, he knew how to purchase, he knew how to price, he knew how to repair, he knew even how to collect debts. You strongly believe Jesus was a business man. Yes. Anyone who sets up a business to work in it, you created a job for yourself, that business will fail. When the leader sees small, yeah. the business is definitely going to stay small. small, and so is everyone in it trapped in the smallness. Exactly. You who think the business people are not in kingdom business. Ooh. everybody good morning good morning good morning yes you are welcome to business garage this sunday this thanksgiving sunday it's the first sunday of the month of march and we are excited to celebrate thanksgiving sunday here at worship harvest so even before i tell you who i am please go ahead and tell the neighbor what you are thankful for this morning so go ahead and share for those of you that are online you are most welcome to business garage my name is sharon and I am your host this morning on Business Garage. And like I said, it's Thanksgiving. So if you're online, go ahead, share that link. And of course, tell us what you are thankful for this Sunday morning. Uh, studio audience, you are welcome. Have you told your neighbor what you are thankful for? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So you are most welcome. Today's show is one that is going to be exciting. We have somebody in studio with us that is ready to impart and tell us more about what he does. We have been seeing him in front of the screen, you know, acting. But today we are not acting, yes, guys? This is the real thing, yeah? Yes, so this is not acted. It's a real thing. And he's here to share his story as well as his insights and his experiences that we hope one of you will learn from. If it's your first time tuning into Business Garage, you are most welcome. And at Business Garage, we're coming to you live from Worship Harvest Studios, from Worship Harvest Nalia. And we are happy that you could join us this morning at Worship Harvest. We equip our businessmen and women to go ahead and do kingdom business even in the marketplace and so that's what we are doing here at business garage and business garage is part of a big other network of business in worship harvest which lives off three main pillars which is community coaching as well as capital so there are spaces where there's coaching for businessmen and women there is a community the business leaders network that you can plug in and then we are can even advise you on how to access that capital that you're looking for for your business so that is what happens at in business sphere in worship harvest so let's get right into it and studio audience welcome with me our guest for today matthew nabuiso from nabuiso films you are most welcome matthew um thank you i'm happy to be here you are happy to be here we are most excited thank you for taking out the time to be with us today and we're looking forward to what you have to share with us and here at business garage we always like to start in a special way by giving you an opportunity to send greetings. Now, especially for you, you must have fans. Most people, we tell them we have fans, but we are not sure. You will know that <laughs> because you're an actor, you definitely have fans. So you can go ahead, send greetings very quickly before we kick into it. Um, of yeah. course, I would love to start with my family, my wife and children. You're, <laughs> yes. you're the reason I keep doing what I do. And yeah. to all my friends and fans, I'm happy to be here. Yes, uh, this guy is an expert, yeah? You know, he has wrapped everybody up, my friends and fans. Well, that is the way it should be, and so we, <laughs> everybody is covered. You are most welcome. But let me tell you a little bit about Matthew, guys. Matthew is an actor. Most of you have seen him on set in a, 
you know, in front of your screens. He's also known for some of his roles in some of the movies. Uh, you know, there's one that is really a big one that he likes. I think Rain is one of his favorites, as well as The Hostel that most of you got to watch. Yes, most people got to watch The Hostel. But he's not only an actor, he's a director and a producer and a businessman. He's a business owner and together with his wife, they own Nabuiso Films, right? right? Yes, so if you thought all he does is acting, no. He is a business owner as well. And so today, he's here on Business Garage to share with us. He's married, he already mentioned, to fellow actress and a director, Elena, and we send her greetings this morning. Yes, and he's an award winner. Come on now. Ah, uh, yes. He won the award for Best Actor at the Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards. Wow. So we have an award winner with us here in studio, and you're most welcome once Thank again. You. Yes, and so we want to get right into it. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get into the space of acting? How do you start acting? Just quickly. Um, I got into acting about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my journey as, a, as, a, as an artist, I think, began way back in high school. Mm -hmm. I went to Busoga College, Miri, for my O-level. Hey, she have obese here. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, thereafter I went to Namasagali College. Mm -hmm. And I think in Namasagali College, that's where my journey as an artist began. Because uh, what being there under Reverend Father Grimes, he always told a story of a world, of the a land of the blind people. Mm. In this land of the blind people, there was a one-eyed man. And uh, this one-eyed man always saw things differently. And when he shared this, that information with the blind people, they said, I think we need to remove that thing mm. from this, call the eye from the blind man so he can see things the way we do. Why was he sharing this? Back in then in my late 90s when I was in high school, most schools used to focus on academics. You either need to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, and things like that. But what Father Grimes taught us is that uh, creative, the creative industry is also a career. So much as we're doing academics, he put a lot of emphasis in co-curricular activities. So we found that everything that we used to do, anyone used to do back in Namasagali, if you were a swimmer, you became a professional swimmer as a career. If you loved dancing, you became a professional dancer. If you, whatever you did as a co-curricular activity ended up becoming a career. So that's also where I got interest in, uh, in music, dance, and drama, and today it's my career. So while everybody was focusing on the corporate jobs, he taught us life skills. What else can you do if science or mathematics fails? So that is what the one-eyed man taught us, and that's where my journey began as a, a creative artist. So fast forward after I left Namasagali, I, I took some time. I used to attend, uh, there used to be, I don't know if that place still exists, a pub called Sabrina's. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, <laughs> this is the place where most yes, Ugandan musicians grew up, were, were, were produced. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, we used, I used to attend that place. That's where you would find Bebe Cool, Chameleon, Juliana, Irene Namobiru, we all used to go there and just sing. We would loved singing, we loved singing. And this became careers for most of them. At the time, as I was there, I also had a day job. But you know when you're young and you're hustling, you have to walk from wherever you're coming from, Kanyanya, Machi, India, and walk to this place to sing. If you do not sing your heart out, so that people can tip you maybe like a 4K, like a 3K, you're so going your to wages walk back were 4,000 shillings. Yes, about that. Yeah, it was if you got 4K, you, you were, have something to eat, you, you have a the highest paid Yes, and you transport. There is no walking back home. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that is what used to happen. But I used to look at this life and say, this is too much hassle. I have a day job. So I chose to focus on my day job then. These other people continued. I think also they had challenges. Some of them had not, I think, studied to a certain extent that would give them corporate jobs. So all they had was Their music. Yeah. So they stuck in there, 
And boom, five years down the road, they had become who they became. I looked back and I said, did I make a mistake? I think I did. But that ship has sailed. Mm. So I continued doing my corporate job. Uh, along the journey, I found myself uh, being introduced to a certain church to sing. Yeah. By another artist who, was also, who had also just uh, moved into church, given his life to Christ and was singing. Yeah. This gentleman is called Luther T. So I went to find out why he's in church. When I got there and I saw these people praise and worship in an amazing way, I was like, wow, this, this actually in happens church. in yeah. church? Wow. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. To do what you do, and yet it is actually glorifying God, I found that very fascinating. So I ended up in church and I ended, entered the music ministry for about 10 years. You were serving in the music uh, yeah, ministry? Yeah, I was in a church ministry. I was a choir director at some point for many, many years. But after some time, there came a wave. I heard while I stayed in church that there is this uh, gentleman that has come from Amsterdam who is into doing film and is looking for people to audition for film. So I said, okay, why not give it a shot? And of course, when I thought about film, I was like, I think this is a very big and serious industry. When I think about Hollywood, this is actually a career someone can have. If the ship for music left me, mm. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Yeah. This one, I must I'm going to jump on it when mm. it is starting. I know it's going to be tough, but when things work out, I'll be at the top. And that's exactly what I did. So I went for auditions. That's how I did my first role of the film called Battle of the Souls. Battle of the Souls. Yeah, this mm. was the film about Roger Mugisha and mm. his occult oh, world. Oh, yes, yeah. remember that. Uh, that yeah. was my first role. I did the lead role. And after that, I did a couple of other films. There was a State Research Bureau, A Good Catholic Girl, which is the film that got me the, the, the nod in, a, yeah, yes. in, a, in Lagos, Nigeria, in the MVCA. But in my journey as an actor, I always looked at this film director. I admired him. He would tell his stories of uh, being in film school in Amsterdam. He would talk about these film directors that uh, taught him A, B, C, D, and I was like, I want to be a film director someday. Yes. So I kept the vision. I kept watching what he does, how he does. I visited many other film sets, and my job there was not to just act, yes. but to learn, to learn how film is made. Ten years down the road, uh, long story short, I became a film producer um, with my wife. What next, what next? So in my thinking, I'm saying, okay, this show is going to end someday. Mm. When it ends, what do I what, have for my fans? What next, really? Yeah. Yes, what do I have for my fans? So that's when I had this discussion with my wife. And I said, you know, let's think of what to do for our fans going forward. But besides our fans, let's think about ourselves when this job, when this show is done, how do we continue acting? Do we keep looking for jobs? Yes, we could do that, but there are never guarantees. You know how hard it is to make to get jobs in Kampala. There are never guarantees. So I said, now instead of thinking of looking for a next job, how about we create ourselves these jobs? Then we know we have continuity as actors. So. Having come from the corporate world, because I worked in the corporate section, sector for about close to 20 years. So while you were acting, you were also yes, working? Yes, while I was acting, yeah. I was also working. Uh, I had a corporate job. I was more into sales and marketing. And uh, I grew from the lower level of just a mere salesperson yeah. to a department head, where I always had a target of 2 to $3 million a year. By the time I left that organization, uh, not to brag, but I think I was their best salesperson. Yes. You give me a PowerPoint presentation, I would sell to you and you would buy. Mm. That is how we were able to meet these targets of two to three million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So with that background, I told myself, 
if I have been doing this for somebody else, why not use the same knowledge and skills to do it for myself with Nawiso Films? So that is how I move into becoming a, a business owner under Nawiso Films. So with Nawiso Films, um, we've been around for quite some time. And our vision is to change lives of people in our communities through film. Through film. So we look at what challenges are happening in our communities. We think of how do we showcase these challenges and how do we share possible solutions with people in our communities. So that is why that when you see that every film that we have done has it's edu edutainment. Mm. There's a huge element of entertainment, but we're also trying to teach people something because yes. we feel that that's our calling, your calling. to do yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of awareness in your Yes, in your, yes, there's always movies, a lot of awareness in our films. All right. Yeah. All right. So you've started your business, and now you are doing uh, really absolutely well. You're probably one of the leading uh, producers that mm. we have in the country. But you started this business. We want you to just tell us a little bit. How was it? How was it? How easy was it to start and get into film production in it, Uganda, in our it country? It wasn't yes. easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but I was prepared for it to be hard. Yeah. I'd learned my lesson in the music industry. I saw how hard it, it was, but only the people that held on became who they became. Became anything, yeah. Yeah, I chickened out and... Five years down the road, people were showing off hammers, mm. people were showing off <laughs> their mansions. Yeah, yeah. are still renting, by the way, in the neighborhood here in Chaliwaja. In Chaliwaja. <laughs> yes. It was like a small house and it yes. was... Uh, so when I go into film, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Yes. At the time when I had my corporate job, I'd also, I was also doing farming as a side gig. So we had bought some land in Luero, about 20 acres. We had about 200 goats there. We also had a small rabbit farm in Sonde with about 200 rabbits. So when I decided to go film, I sold all these things. I sold all the goats, I sold yes. all the rabbits, I sold all the land in Luero and invested this money in film. We did a television series called Hashtag Family. So we did it, it was a 13 episode series. Very good, amazing. People were like, wow, this is beautiful. And this show aired on NTV. It used to air on NTV, I think, every Sunday at 5.30. It was a family show. Yeah. Uh, why this show is because, like I said, we wanted to always address. We are at the point yes. where people are saying there are no more family values. So we are like, okay, can we do a family show where we can actually address family values and help people remember this is a better way to live as a family as opposed to the way... Things are happening today with lots of divorce, lots of what, you know, children disrespecting parents, parents, you know, GBV and all that. So that's what we did. So we invested a lot of money in that. And even the money we used, we sold wasn't enough. I still had to borrow more money from people to take loans to do this show. I did the show. I did a lot of traveling around uh, in film markets. One time I was in South Africa. There's a film market called Discop where I met... Uh, supposedly biggest uh, film distributor in Africa. When yeah. I landed on him, I was like, this is it. So I show them my show, they love it. We sign a distribution agreement, and I'm like, okay, you guys sell. We are going to have a revenue share. I think it was a 60-40 arrangement. But uh, months rolled, there was nothing happening. So I was forced, I said, I'm a sales guy. Let me go back and look for market. So that's how I end up pitching this show to Malt Choice. Malt Choice loves it. I was like, okay, can we have it? So I'm like, okay. I'd sold distribution rights to this company. Let me send them this communication. They will sell the movie to you, the series to you. They will pay me. They pay you. So that happened. They, they, I talked to them. They sent this content to Malt Choice. Malt Choice bought the series, paid them. Up to this day, I've never gotten $100. Wow. Yeah. After selling the farm, selling yes, what, yes, taking yeah. loans. And you closing the deal with multi-choice. Yes. Yes. They I never was paid you. banged on the head. Wow. This is a point where most people would say, You'd rethink. Yeah. Am I in the right business? Yes. Yeah. Or this is a sign. 
Oh, this is a sign yeah. from God. Because you've sold everything <laughs> and everything is gone. Yeah. Yes. Because I did it all and everything was gone. Yes. Um, but what the beauty about uh, doing a business, I always tell people, you need to know if it is actually your calling. Yeah. And that is probably one of the most difficult questions. How do I know my calling? I always give people a very simple formula. Um, one, I use a formula called heart. Mm -hmm. Heart like Omutima. The heart. Mm. H E A R T. Yeah. At heart, H standing for heart, or call it passion. Mm -hmm. If you do not have passion to do something, then it's probably not your calling. You must have passion. You see, after everything has failed, like what I just shared, yeah. I didn't stop making film. I looked for more money and I invested in film again. Again. Yes, yeah. I borrowed more money and I invested in film because I was sure I wanted to do film. You know, when we talk about passion, it is this some th one thing that you do and you will do for free. But if this one thing can actually pay you, then I think that's your calling. Okay. So uh, that's H. When we go to E, you've got to have a certain degree of experience in what you're doing. Yeah. If you say, I want to do farming, I feel this is my calling, you've got to have a degree of experience in farming. Mm -hmm. You must have read either something, a chicken or what, a duck. <laughs> you know, you've got yes, to have a degree yeah. of, 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 yeah. If you say, my calling is to be a show host, you've got to have some degree of doing this mm -hmm. for you to be sure you actually own the right mm -hmm. track. Yeah. yeah. Then um, A, which uh, stands for action. You've got to actually get into action and actually do what you think you're called to do. Mm -hmm. You can't say I'm called to be a musician and you've not written a song, you've not tried singing, mm -hmm. you've not gone to studio yeah. to record a song. If you've not done that and you believe this is your calling, then you need to rethink. Mm. Yeah, you've the got option. to be able to take action in what you think it's what you're called to do. If you think you're called to run a boutique shop as your business, you've got to love doing boutiques. Yeah. You've got to have certain experience in that area of maybe uh, fashion. fashion. Yeah, yes. You've got to have some degree of experience. You've got to take action and actually open this boutique and make it work. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next letter is uh, R. Uh, R. R. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, when things go hard, like it did with my story about film, I invested and lost everything. This is when you need resilience. Mm -hmm. Without resilience, you will mm. fail. If you don't have resilience for this thing, you will fail. Then you're going to go for a plan B, then mm. a plan C, yeah. then a plan you D. You keep restarting other things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you, if you're sure. This is what you want to do. You've got to hang in. What people call okure merako. Mm. Okure merako. That's what I did as That's a filmmaker. Resilience. Yes. Yeah. I know we had these fights with my wife many times. She's like, Habi, I know you have this vision, but it's not practical. It's not working. Mm. What, We've what tried... caused her to think that? What was happening Because, in your life? you see, women are practical. Mm. There must be food. <laughs> yeah, you must pay tuition. <laughs> You must pay medical. <laughs> you can't say we are doing this and yeah, there is no I food. I have a vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is no food. There is no what. It's not practical. It doesn't make sense. So can you try something that makes sense? Yeah. Can you maybe go back and get another job? In that season when yes. you just launched it. Yeah. Can business? you go back and get another job because yeah. this Where is the thing, food? Yeah. yeah. The vision is not feeding us. Yeah. Our son has been <laughs> <laughs> has been sent back from school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so women are practical like that. So yeah. while we men are always very vision and we're thinking, someday it's going to work, coming, someday it's, it's going to work. So, <laughs> so I had to be very resilient through this. Yes, yeah. uh, she challenged me many times, but I said I had my lesson from the music industry. I'm not that giving up this time. Sailed. Yeah. I saw it sail. I said, this one is going with me. Mm. If we die, we die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had to be a very resilient character when it came to, to yes. that. And then, of course, the last letter is T. Um, you have got to have time for this thing. You can't say this is my calling and you have no time for it. Mm. 
Yeah. And you also have to put some targets. Say in one year, I if I'm, be, I'm, yeah. I'm a, an artist, I need to have done this. Mm. If um, whatever business you're thinking of doing, you have to have certain targets. Say maybe in one year, I have to do this. So in five years, this is my plan. So if you can put these things together, then you can be able to figure out exactly what you are called to do. And that is why you should put all your energies. So making film was a very hard journey. But over the years, um, it's a long story, but long story short, over the years I kept trying, we knocked on doors. I used all the wisdom I had in, as a salesperson. To be very honest, I got to a point when my wisdom didn't work. Mm. It didn't work. I would go and make presentations and people would clap and say, wow, amazing presentation, but that's where everything would end. I never got a call back. As a Christian, I'll share this with you. This pushed me to seek God Father. Because you see, after everything has failed, I yeah. don't think God fails. God doesn't he fail. He doesn't. He never yeah. does. Mm. So the Christian, I had to go do a lot of uh, soul searching. I prayed. I read the scriptures. I read the Bible. The Bible t is very clear that... Uh, the, but God says, I knew you before you came out of your mother's mm -hmm. bosom. Yeah. And I had good plans for you and plans for prosperity. Now, I had to hang on to such scriptures. The promises. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, if God has plans for me and there are plans for prosperity, it's going to happen. I just yeah. don't know when, but it's going to happen. He said it, he will do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's not a man that he should lie. Yeah. So that is, I will say, is the secret of my success. Mm. When all the challenges have kicked in and everything seems like it's not going to work, I hold on to the promises, script, the promises of God. And, yes. and indeed, today things have changed. Time came when I was doing a, a television series, the current show we are doing, Sanyu. Uh, we've shot Sanyu uh, for about four years now. And... Uh, wow. It was a very challenging, it's been one of the most challenging projects I've had to do. Uh, today we have shot up to, pro I think broadcast about 800 episodes. Wow, of this yeah, wow, yeah, yeah, 800. Yeah. Yes, 800. And uh, by the end of this season, because we are doing season four, we will have done 880 episodes. Amazing. Uh, it's yes. probably the longest yeah. television series that has ever existed in Uganda. In Uganda, yes. Yeah, but doing Sanyu was also a very challenging show. When we started working, doing this show, of course, I am bro I'm producing it for a broadcaster, Mnet. They, are, they give you targets. By this time, you need to have given us yeah. this. So I remember I had a target of delivering f the first 50 episodes by the 15th of December 2020. Yeah. So 15th December, I have to deliver 50 episodes. Now, on the 15th of November, there was an in-house job that was done, and somebody stole or people stole all our filming equipment. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. This is very expensive yeah. gear. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So they steal all our equipment. I come to work this morning and they tell me we've been robbed. Our equipment is all gone. It was very heartbreaking to know that this was an inside job because people were on location. About 30 people were on location. When did this happen? Yeah, yeah. this happened during COVID. So people used to stay at the location. And no stranger walks into a mansion mm. and steals things. It doesn't happen. It was an in-house job. So I'm like, fine. You know what? The devil is a liar. He is. <laughs> Today we take it off. Mm. We go rest. It was a Saturday. Monday, we come back and shoot again. So Sunday, I used Sunday to go and find who can hire, rent me equipment. We rented the equipment. Monday, we resumed working. Uh, that is Monday, I think, around the 17th, 17th of November. Yes. So we start uh, filming again. We continue. Around the 20th November, it was a week after, somebody sent us a worm, and it captured all our footage. 
we had shot 40 episodes. All the footage was fried. All of it. Wow. All of it. <laughs> wow, this business owner. <laughs> All of it. This is a week after we've lost equipment. Yes. Now, and all the, the footage challenges for are coming 40 in episodes hard and fast. Yeah. Yeah. is gone. I said, God, I don't understand, but I am called to do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do this. So we try out how do we recover this, recover this. We tried all things. It failed. It failed. Um... You know, as a filmmaker, you'll do film, but at the end of it, you've got to market the film. Yeah. So what we do today, as you all know, we use a lot of social media to market our products. So a week after we've lost our footage, um, somebody stole my social media account. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> You know, you have a following. Mercy, Lord. This is where you're going to advertise, tell people what you're doing. The social media accounts are gone. I was like, okay, how does this happen? Now, of course, working with Malt Choice, I had to let them know what's happening. What's happening, yeah. yes. So when the equipment was stolen, I told them the equipment has been stolen. They're like, sorry, sorry, but you have the footage, right? Yes. A week down the road, I tell them, <laughs> even the footage even is the gone. Footage is gone. <laughs> Now, they also fell into a panic. They said, this Ugandan must be playing games. We are coming. We are now we <laughs> So they say, we are coming to see what's going on. So they, come, they are coming in on a Monday. That was either 20-something in November. So they are coming in on a Monday. No, actually, it was coming, I think, to the close of November, around 30th November here. Yeah. They are coming in on a Monday. On Sunday, I got hit by COVID. Like <laughs> properly hit by COVID. Ah. Joints aching, <laughs> headache, what, what? I was hit by COVID. But this, on Monday... Yeah, job style. You really have lived job style. On life. Monday, <laughs> maltrace people are coming in. They are flying in from Nairobi. And you're quarantined. Now, there is no way mm. I was going to tell them <laughs> Sorry, guys, I can't see I you. Even I have, have COVID. COVID. <laughs> even you wouldn't believe me, would you? <laughs> no, I'd be like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I did, I actually didn't even tell my staff. I didn't tell my crew. I didn't tell my cast. Uh, a boy here was, was around. She didn't know. They didn't know. I just swallowed my meds, put on my mask, and went to work. These guests came in. Fortunately, when they came in, we were again in working mode. Mm. They found us filming this, filming that. We had tried to gather mm. some 10 episodes again. So there was something for them to see. That we've, I showed them where they broke in. I showed them police reports. I showed them everything. And I showed them that we've been able to shoot some more. 10 yeah. episodes. And here are rough we'll cuts that you can look at. Yeah. So they came and they got the confidence that this actually happened. But they are working. And remember, we are in COVID. We are in lockdown. It's very Where hard to transport, get anything. Yeah, movement yeah. was hard and everything, mm. but we were working. We're working. So, of course, ordinarily, if you have to go through this, this is when you're going to say this is a sign from God. I shouldn't be doing this. Mm, God is telling me to quit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I yes. knew yeah. this was my calling. Yeah. I said we are going to do it. Anyhow, no matter what, yes, yeah, yeah. we are going to do it anyhow. People never got to know about this, but around the following year, March, we launched the show. Yeah. It went on air. Everybody loved it. And when I say we've been doing this show for four years, 800 episodes, it took a lot of resilience, yeah, it took start, passion, yes, it took giving yeah. it time, it took all these things that I mentioned. And that is why I am where I am as a business owner. Wow. <laughs> yes. So when you tell us that you have to be resilient, it is really, really true that you have to be resilient. But what I'm curious about is how do you become this person? Because many times people have 
you know, there have been talk, people complain about creatives, you know, creatives work at a certain hour, creatives work on their own calendar, you know, it's difficult, we hear about actors, they're difficult to work with, and all these things. I don't know if they're true, those are just here, hearsays, you know, that we've had, but how have you managed to, in Uganda, to be able to become the person that you are, to own a business that is releasing uh, movies that are now on the continent, and I believe globally, being watched and being followed, and how do you do it? What is it about you? What is your work ethic? What are those cultures in your space that you have instilled and make sure that your business continues, that brands like Mnet are trusting you to go and release a series for them. I think yes. um, the first challenge we have as creatives is uh, we think this is all about passion. But yeah. yes, passion is important. And passion is that thing that keeps you going when everything fails. But then again, you need to know that it's a business. You're yeah. running a business. So passion and the business have to move together. Now, business has ethics. Yeah. It has principles which one must follow. I was lucky that I got to work in the corporate world and got to learn how businesses are run. So even as a creative, I run my production house as a business. I run it professionally. I give my people my vision, what we are doing, where we are going, how do we get there, yeah. and we stick to those business principles. I don't, I don't tolerate late coming. Creatives think you can show up anytime. That is in discipline of the highest order, and that's where discipline starts. I do not tolerate uh, reckless mistakes. Mm. There are penalties attached to that. I do not tolerate mediocre work because I can't take my clients for granted. Yes. Yeah, our clients, Ugandans as an audience, are very picky. And they love good stuff. Yeah. You can't give it's them true. mediocre stuff and they'll eat it. They won't take it. So yeah. you can't take the audience for granted. When I'm making a film, I'm making it so that even somebody in the US or Europe so would have a reason level. to watch it. Yes, the quality is that that's point. the stuff yeah. that Ugandans watch. They watch Hollywood films. Yeah, so you can't do them any Yeah, British injustice. films. Yeah. Yes. So if you want them to watch they your know stuff, what is good. it has got to be equally as good. Yeah. The difference is this has a local touch to it which they also relate with. Yes. You're not trying to be fake in your storytelling. You have to be real. You have to give them what actually happens. It has to be believable. So I've had to make sure that my quality of work is at that standard. That's why Mnet will buy content from me yes. because they are an international brand. They have tested quality. They broadcast Hollywood films on their platforms, so I can't bring anything Whatever you bring less. there has Whatever to be. Whatever I bring has to be up to standard. So quality of work has to be very key. Uh, delivery is very key. Mm. I can't afford to give excuses for failing to deliver. Mm, even when your footage is Yes, <laughs> that's what I always tell my profession, yeah. my, my, my people, that who is a professional? People can describe a profession in many ways, but I say a professional is that person that delivers with zero excuses. Wow. I just told you a story of what I had to go through, but I had to deliver. Yes, no matter what. Whether the equipment was stolen, footage was stolen, I got COVID, I had to deliver. And that is why they trusted me with many more seasons. After because that, yeah. regardless of all that, I delivered. Even when they knew what you were Even going through. Even when they knew, yeah. that was no ex it was no reason for me to be late. Yes. I had to deliver. So that's what I've done. Those are the ethics I follow. And that is, I believe, what has enabled me to be where I am today as a, an entrepreneur. All right. Mm. Um, and um, these are it's a two-in-one question. What opportunities are there for somebody? Because you've been in film. I don't know if there are that many film producers. Unfortunately, I'm not aware about that. But what other opportunities are there in the film industry for an entrepreneur? They might not be an actor or a producer, but what opportunities are there in case someone wanted to, to venture into a business that supports this industry or that adds value? What opportunities do you see that, you know, this area, we lack this, someone should, you know, come into this space? What um, opportunities are there? There are very many yeah. opportunities. Uh, film 
as an industry has very many departments. Um, they are the actors. So we have people who want to come and act. There is that opportunity. Okay. There, are, there is a camera crew. You know how to capture pictures. There is that opportunity. You know how to light is another opportunity. Do you know how to make up people? That's an opportunity. Oh, really? Do you know how to do this, beautify this background? Yeah. We call it set design. That's an opportunity. Do you, are you stylist? Do you know, are you a stylist? Do you know how, are you good with fashion? Costume department is not about putting clothes on people. They have to dress a certain way for a reason. Mm. So there are all those opportunities. Catering is an opportunity still in film. There are still many jobs as, uh, that you can get and be able to do in the film in the industry. film space. Yeah. Yes. We have very many questions, but as usual, uh, we are always running out of time. But I think if you're out there, you've heard that there are very many opportunities beyond just being mm. uh, the film producer or the film director in this space. Mm. I wanted to just ask quickly, as a, as a Christian person that's out there, mm. what are some of those things that you have said, this is a space I will not go into because there are challenges to conform mm. to what is being delivered out mm. there. Have you encountered those and how have you dealt with them? What are those things that you have said, you know, this is where we are going to go and you have seen that it doesn't pay to conform. You can actually uh, choose what you want to do and it works for you. Yeah, I'll say the world today is driving in a certain direction. Yeah. But I think as Christians, we need to guard ourselves generously because yeah. there is nothing more precious than salvation. Mm -hmm. So it is important to guard your salvation beyond everything, anything else. Today, there are so many things that come in. Everybody wants money, and money makes life interesting or easy, fun. Easy. Yeah. Mm. But then it is clear that if you seek the kingdom of God, everything shall follow you. Yes. Kingdom of God and his righteousness. righteousness. Mm. When you seek the righteousness of God, if money will follow you. That's for a fact. I've tested that. Yeah. It will follow you. So as a Christian, I do not encourage anybody to conform to worldly standards unless your God is not alive, is not a God. Mm -hmm. If he's God, he will help. I've personally prayed away certain things. Yeah. I've prayed away certain income sources. Let those sources not come my way. Because I do not want to compromise the Christian I am. When we were doing, um, as a filmmaker, it is common out there people believe that sex sells. If you don't go sexual, you don't sell. I have done 800 episodes of Sanyu, and the show is not sexual at all. Wow. And people watch it. It's the most watched show. Even, you can even count the kisses in that show. They are not more than three in the 800 episodes. But have people not understood the love story? Yeah. Have people not fallen in love with the characters? Yeah. So I think that is a misconception. And people or Christians need to know, ought to know better. They ought to know better. These are just misconceptions, actually. You can still run on Christian values and you can still make it big. Yes, in whatever industry. Yes, in whatever industry. Yes. Do. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. All right. We don't have a lot of time, but I think we have one person who wants to share a question or a comment. I, I'm hoping it's a comment <laughs> about uh, uh, just the interview and everything. Yes. You're welcome. Please share. Thank you. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Betty Abo. And uh, I've had the privilege of working with Nelviso Films for closely four years. Um, I've been working with them as a cosmetologist, as a makeup person. Oh, yes. I got that wow. opportunity with them. <laughs> yes. When I joined Nawiso Films, um, <clears throat> I was presented this opportunity. And uh, the first time I'm there, I encounter about 30 people as my workmates. Now, this was my first time working with such many people. And, uh, you know, 30 people, these are different characters, personalities, behaviors, mannerisms, and all that. It took me a while to adjust with dealing with people. 
I struggled so much because I was so self-centered, you know. Life was about me, 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 because at that time, also before I joined them, shortly before I joined them, I was self-employed and I wasn't really, 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 you know, kept down to a, a little small space where you have to deal with these many people. Um, through that struggle, I held on because I had, had, I had sought of the Lord about this job of God. Do you want me to be in this thing? Because at that particular time, my parents had been telling me, you're into business, but we think, ah, it's not yet time, what, what? So anyway, I sought of the Lord to join this, this job. And when the opportunity came, I knew that this was just not me earning money from here. I knew it was supposed to make me something. So I told myself, you're going to learn everything there is to learn. And I opened my heart to learning. It was not an easy process, learning people, their characters, what. I just had to discover myself, learn, my, learn who I am, and take everything that I needed to take for me. Today, I would say, I actually testify boldly that I am a shepherd, I am a pastor. And being a pastor is not about the, the title, it's the person. It's, the, it's a certain heart. So they transformed my heart. Thanks to you, Mr. Nawiso, and the entire team that I worked with. I'm a pastor today. I love people. I'm no longer afraid of dealing with people. I'm no longer afraid of people. I deal so well with people. I understand people because of you. I was selfless, very selfish. Now I am a very selfless person. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> Wow, thank you very much, Pastor Betty. I think you have had one of the people that have been on your set. So while he was saying that um, that's what you do, that's the ethic that you put, but you do more than just that. You have given people an opportunity to work. You've opened up yourself just by taking a step of faith and going out to follow the dream that God put in your heart. So thank you very much, Matthew. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but we would have loved to speak more into and, and hear more about your story. But what you have shared, I'm sure the business owners up there are inspired, they're motivated, they know that even through the challenges, God is with you. And if he said he would do it, he will surely do it and you will see it come to pass. So hang in there, business owner, keep going, uh, keep doing what you need to do because like we always say here, he has already proclaimed and declared his blessing over you. All you need to do is continue to work with it, in it, and you will definitely see the fruit of that. And even as we say that, uh, you have heard Matthew's story, and he keeps talking about the role of God, the role of his salvation, the relationship with his creator that has enabled him to go through life. Life does come with challenges, but when you have the creator of life, at the center of everything, leading you and guiding you as your savior, the journey is definitely worthwhile. And you get to live a life of meaning and purpose in the creator as you have a relationship with him. So I want to invite you into an opportunity to give your life to Christ this morning. If you're out there and you have not made that decision to entrust your life to the one that created you, you have an opportunity this morning. So if you would just bow your head and say this prayer with us this morning. Say, dear Lord, thank you for my life. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you have given everything for me by dying for me. And this morning, I ask you to come into my life, to be my Lord and my Savior, and to take my life and do something significant with it. Thank you. In your name, I have prayed and received. Amen. And if you have just said that prayer, we are excited and heaven is rejoicing about your decision. But we would like to know. So you can dial this number, plus 256 449. There is someone at the end of that line that is ready to help you make sense of the prayer that we just made together this morning. To everyone that is here in studio and online, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you have been inspired, your faith lifted, and you're going to go out there and continue being an amazing business owner that you are. So until next week, thank you and bye-bye.